As photographers and creative professionals, we live and we work on our displays. We have different kind of displays that we deploy in our studios or in our editing space. And it depends on what brand we decide to choose for our display. Many times we'll choose a higher quality brand. Many times we'll choose a display that can do hardware calibration, depending on the need and the subsegment of what we want from our display. Primarily in this video, what I like to do is talk about a subsegment of color management called display uniformity. This Display uniformity is good to know because what you want to know is how even your panel is, how even your picture is being projected at different segments of your panel. So display uniformity is kind of good in that aspect. Now when you run display uniformity test, at least with the X-Rite i1 profiler, what it only does is it only checks for the brightness level at each different quadrants. What it doesn't do in this case, is it doesn't check for the color consistency at each different quadrants. Most of the time though, the color management, when you do a color calibration for your screen, you would hang the hockey puck right in the middle of the screen. And the calibration is done right there because generally the middle of the screen is kind of like the center point of everything. So that's why you do the management there. However, when we're doing uniformity tests, we're going to actually measure each different sections of the screen. And what I like to do in this video is show you how to do that and talk about the whole process a little bit more and why you should want to do it just to kind of know what we're looking at. I'm March Suwon Sang. I'm a BenQ brand ambassador. I'm an x right Colorado, and this is Artist Right. And let's get right into the video. So first of all, I have right here with me BenQ SW270C. This is BenQ 2K display. This is is the latest in their lineup and this is also a screen that BenQ has introduced a new technology called Uniformity version 2.0. This display uniformity is really awesome and I have been running tests on this. I have run tests with the i1 profiler and the result is come out of it is really amazing. So I'm going to use this display as a demo for today's video. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is launch i1 profiler. So now that I have launched i1 Profiler, for this test, this uniformity test, I will be using the i1 Display Pro, which is the device right here. And with this, a couple of things, if you have used i1 Profiler before, you will notice that my screen may look a little bit different. Part of it is because I have actually gone in and in the beginning I have actually shows advanced mode. I just like advanced mode because it gives me a lot more granular control over the settings that I can do in general profiling. But you know, it's always good just to use the advanced mode for me anyway, at least I can go in and control the parameters of what I need. Now what I'm going to do here is come and click right on uniformity. And when uniformity pops up, right now I have my laptop link up to the screen here. So it's asking me which screen do I want to do uniformity tests on. Now you can do the uniformity test on any screen that you have. It doesn't have to be a hardware calibrated display screen. It can be any screen that you may have that you're working on if you want to know the color uniformity of the display. Now, just to give you a little caveat here, the color uniformity is really good to know and you should really kind of be aware of it, especially when you're doing photo editing. If you're doing a photo editing like in Lightroom, in Photoshop, or any other software that you may be using out there and you're editing your photos in full screen, it's always good to know that, for instance, this corner may be a little bit bright, that corner may be a little bit dark. It's always good to just kind of be aware of those things. Now, the thing here is this, it's good to know, but I wouldn't sweat about it too much but what we're going to do here is let me kind of go through with the demo so what i'm going to do is click on the screen that i want to do the uniformity test here i'm going to go ahead and click on this ben q right there and now what i'm going to do is go and click on the measurement and i'm going to start the measurement in fact what i'm going to do here is i'm going to expand this screen out a little bit there we go so we can kind of see the result as it comes once it comes in. I'm going to go ahead and click on start measurement. x right i1 profiler is going to ask me to literally take the x right i1 display pro, pull it out, turn it around, and then we're going to hang this. So as you can kind of see here, x right i1 display pro have divided our display or my display in this case into nine grids. So essentially it's going to start doing the measurement in each different grid. I'm going to go ahead and start with this grid. Then once you line it up, you go ahead and click on next. It's going to start measuring. And essentially it's just measuring three colors, white, gray, and black. Okay. So we're going to kind of do it on the next one. Now the other thing too is that make sure that your 
i1 Display Pro is laying flat on the screen. One thing that helps a lot is that if you tilt the screen at an angle like this to make sure that it stays flat, this generally helps with making sure that you're getting a good reading and a good result. I'm gonna go ahead and click on next here. Now the readout and the value is gonna kind of show us right now what, it, what the i1 Display Pro is reading at each different point. Now what it's not going to tell you is the variation. You will see the variation later on in the software once it's actually done with its uniformity tests. So we're going to continue here for a few more grids and then once we're done with this, we're going to get our result of the uniformity test for this display. Again, if you have a laptop, if you work primarily on a laptop, on a Mac PC, it doesn't really matter, or any device with a built-in screen does to work for it too. It's always good to just kind of test your laptop anyway. What it comes down to with uniformity tests is that these are just great information to know about your device that you're using, the, dis the display that you're using, because you're doing majority of the work on these devices. So it's always good to know where they kind of land. Now, if your display is observably bad, meaning that one side is noticeably brighter than the other side of the display, at that point, it's probably a good time to probably think about buying a new display because, you know, as display age, the backlight technology start to go out, the backlight just doesn't work as well anymore. So those are kind of things to think about as we kind of do this. Okay, we're measuring the last grid here and after this, you will get the uniformity result. Okay, so now that we are done with the measurement, what I'm going to do here is go ahead and take the X-Rite i1 Display Pro, rotate it back, and put the cover back on the lens. And the other thing too is you can go ahead and tilt your screen back to normal viewing mode at this point. So now that we have our uniformity test result, what we're going to do is let's focus on this screen a little bit because it will kind of tell us a little bit more about our display and the quality that we have or the uniformity of each different sections. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and start with the white because that's the default value that was there. So we're going to do that. It kind of tells you what the luminance value that it measure at all those different grids are. And it will also give you right down here the delta E, A, B. And that's pretty much the variation between all these from the actual reference value. In this case, our reference value is always going to be the center point because we do our calibration right there in the center of the screen. All display calibration are done right from the center of the screen, right? So that's going to be our reference point. Everything else, all the other grids are part of the center of the screen. So everything is going to be referencing the center. That's also the reason why the center delta E value is set to zero. Okay. So a couple of things to note there. This is pretty good so far. Um, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and click on the grays. So this is actually kind of telling us the gray, the delta E value between the points. Now the thing is that even though we're just seeing luminance number as a value, as a fixed value, for example, 23, or in this case, they're like 23 and uh, 22 and so forth, when the device is doing the measuring, it's doing a lot more precise measurement than that with a lot more decimal points, but it's not really showing us that. This is also part of the reason why our delta E value has a lot of trailing decimal because we're dealing with smaller variations here. And it's always good to kind of know that. It's one of those things where it's like, yeah, these are great information. It doesn't really change entirely the way how you you would use your display. Um, if it's actually a delta E of like 10 or something like that, you may want to really look into your display and see what's wrong with that. If it's under warranty, contact the manufacturers, um, you know, and, and kind of remedy that issue. But otherwise, if it's within literally point... 4.04 everything is under one or like a little bit above one you're generally okay just remember the rule of thumb is delta e of a, anything below five is generally good if you can actually get that below two that's even better so for the dark gray value, we're getting values that are a little bit higher in terms of delta E range. We're getting about 3, 3.6 being the highest value here. Part of the reason why the dark gray is actually much harder to get a lower delta E value is because the technology of these panel. An IPS LED backlit can only do so much. Now when we get to the newer technologies that are out there in the future, for example, organic LED or OLED, or micro and mini LED that's, that's going to come in the next few years, those are going to change the way how the back color result looks. As of now, this is actually really good considering the performance of an LED backlit technology. Okay, so now that we have done this, we kind of look at this a little bit and I probably dissected a little bit too much, but you know, it's always good to know those kind of info. We're going to come down here.
and we're going to go ahead and click on results. So under results, this is going to tell us a different picture. So before then, it kind of told us the delta E value. It kind of told us the luminance value that is actually measuring in terms of how many candelas they are. This screen shows something different. This screen shows us the luminance value in percentage. Now we can also do a couple things as well. There's three reference parameter that's being used here. Number one, the very top one that we kind of see here, this is the luminance percent delta. This is how, uh, how many percent is off from the center value. Now the thing is that if we're in the hundreds, for example, if we set our white point to like about 100 candela and we're measuring at 100 candela, if it's off by one or two points, it's not a big deal. But when we're talking about the dark grays, you're going to see that in a little bit. It's like if you're off by only a point, you know, if your dark gray is measuring at five and the next area over is measuring at four, between five to four is 20%. So that's something to keep in mind. This is the percent luminance is not necessarily the best value to use. The best value to kind of keep in mind in this case are the two values below. This is the Delta E 2000 and the Delta E AB 2000. Those are kind of the variations that are a lot more granular and they talk about much more of the variation between the sectors rather than just a percentage difference, okay? But in this case, let's start with the luminance. So we have the luminance right on top there, right here, and you can change it to different modes. So we'll start with luminance first, and now we can actually go in and take a look at the white point. Um, the white point seems pretty good with a luminance value of about 2%, 1% the varyings, and it also tells you the luminance uh, value that is measuring, for example, like 111 candela. This is 109 candela in the middle, so it's pretty good. Let's go ahead and look at the grays. So the grays are still pretty good too. It all passes. This is, by the way, this default setting from i1 profiler right now. And also the dark gray also passes as well. But now let's go into Delta E. The default that's actually set on the i1 profiler is 10. But what I like to do is let's pull this number down just to have fun with it. I'm going to go ahead and pull this number down to about four. Four is when we start to see the problem with the grays a little bit. Let's go ahead and see the white. White pass with four without any problem. In fact, let's pull this up to five and we'll keep it there. Um, let's go look at the white. We're good on the white. We're also good on the gray and the dark gray. Okay. Now here's the case. This is the dark gray that I was talking about earlier. If I go down here and let's bring this down to about four, the delta E value in this quadrant is a little bit high, but Honestly, though, if we actually take a look at the variation of a panel and we bring the delta E value to four, that's being like really strict and really rigid with it. I don't think that we need to be that strict about it. So we can actually bring this up to five and we're okay. In fact, this is already half the value. I remember that I kind of mentioned a general rule of thumb is that delta E below five is generally a good value. Let's take a look at the delta E AB 2000. And again, let's start with the white. And I'm also going to bring this down to five as well. Now this passed without any color. In fact, amazingly enough, if I continue to bring this down to like even, you know, it's not until I hit number two or a delta E value of two that you start to see the red. So the panel uniformity of this one is really great. Now, if you try this on another display, sometime you will have a delta E value in some sector that exceeds 10. It doesn't mean the panel is not good. Sometimes uniformity of the backlight technology is not quite as, as good. So this is part of the reason why I'm using this model to demo because this is, you know, an upgraded backlight technology that BenQ has kind of worked on. All right, so we'll leave this as at, let's leave this at two for now, or actually let's go back to three so that it will look so that it will show us green. Let's go to gray. So gray is also passed with three as well. Let's see if it will pass at two. Amazing enough, gray will also pass at two, which is really great. Now, when it comes to dark gray, we'll probably see a lot more red showing up. Yep, like I said. But let's bring the dark gray up to three. We only have one patch left. And if we bring it up to four, even better, they're all green. Now, again, when I'm showing you like these red things, I'm bringing these value way down from the default value. So this panel is really a great panel with great uniformity. So what does uniformity do in this case? It just makes you aware, for instance, if you're editing and you're zooming in on a photo in full screen mode, right? You will know that, for example, this corner may be a little too bright. So 
If you're really trying to edit something that's in this corner or that corner of the photo, you may want to bring it into the center of the screen just to make sure you verify that. The way how I see it is this. These values are great to know. I wouldn't obsess over it. Part of the reason why is that everything is homogenous with photography. The color kind of blends in. Once you print it out, they kind of blends in. The other thing too is that some may say like, well, I really just do digital work. I really do work for Instagram. Well, even better, those small phones are all blended in colors. So we don't have to really worry about it too much and we don't have to spend too much time on this. This is just something good to be aware of. And if ever at any point in time, you realize that one half of your display or one part of your display is glowing much brighter than the other parts, if it's actually noticeable, it's always good to kind of just run this test and see how it looks. And if, like I said, if there is a problem, contact the manufacturer if you're in a warranty period, see what they can do to help you out. So I hope that you find this video on display uniformity helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or any ideas for future videos, please feel free to leave them in a comment below. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel and hit on the notification bell so that you will be updated every time I upload new cool color management videos like this. And until next time, art is right. the i1 display pro which is this little puck hockey puck right here is it a hockey puck <laughs> it kind of is referred to as a hockey puck okay i just want to yeah. make sure now here's the case many times we're going to see some delta e value many times we're going to see uh, forget it <laughs> we're going to go with the first one i want to keep the first one i was like let's just measure it anyway this is going to give me the report Stop. Okay, we're measuring the last grid here. And I can't find my mouse pointer. <laughs> Do you need the screen tilted more towards you so you don't have to look as far? Yeah. We tilted it more. I can kind of do this. Because it was like this. A little bit more. Sure. Okay. It's off from the base now. We adjust the base. All right. <laughs> yeah, get it right, Ash. This is called Art is Right, not Ashlyn is Right. You know, that's very true. It's all, it's, it's all recorded on tape. All right, we don't use tape anymore. Do you still refer to it as tape? Art is wrong! Yeah, I say videotape. Like we're... Yeah. Or I guess it's filming. Yeah, we'll watch digital movie on a videotape. Hmm. Okay. Closet time!